right? It looks like. Okay, it looks like we are in business. All right. Alexa, stop playing music. Good. Right, we'll put it back on in a little bit. I just couldn't turn the volume up high enough here, everybody. <laughs> All right, it just has some information cool, in it. Right. Um, I just thing. handed out a little bit of information that we're going to go over tonight in folders, but the paperwork that I just handed out here is also in the healthy chat link that I sent out earlier. So I tried to include everybody in the healthy chat. Um, so that way, if anyone needs to connect through there or see the Zoom link at any time or access any of the worksheets, I'll put everything in there. Um, okay, so just want to get started. I know we have a ton to cover tonight and a little bit of time together. So thank you all so much for being here. I'm really, really excited about this workshop. Thank you. Yeah, it's so great to see everyone joining us Zoom and in person. So yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself really quick for anybody that doesn't already know me. Um, my name's Kelly. I'm a therapist here and I do individual sessions, but I also really love like group work and getting people together and connecting and um, just kind of helping each other along on the ride in the journey. Um, that's something that I just really love, that companionship and that connection. So it's really happy to be able to do things like this also. Great. So I just wanted to do a really quick introduction um, just to kind of learn some names and just kind of get a little bit of energy flowing and make sure that we kind of all know each other before we dive in. So. If it's okay, would everyone mind just kind of sharing your name and maybe one thing that kind of stood out to you or brought you here tonight, or maybe something that you're looking to get out of this workshop? Okay. Anyone want to start? Okay, okay yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Debbie. Um, what I want to get out of this workshop is, like today and this evening, I had a really stressful day at work, and I need some, and I did go to the other calming thing. But when you're super stressed, you just, you forget about it. And I need something that I can remember that can bring me back down into, all right, calm down, you know. Like re reground you a little bit. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. And I was driving, so I couldn't do the, you know, the, 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 the um, 54321 where, you know, because I, and plus my brain, I'm just so stressed out right now that I, I can't think. Okay. I can't even think about, right. you know, my things I'm thinking of or, or smelling or, you know, what happened. So a lot of overwhelm going yes. on. Yes. Yeah. There, there you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> exactly what we're going to talk about. Overwhelm and lots of different emotions. So okay. yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dawn, and um, I have a teenager with autism. So that's enough to cause you some stress. <laughs> and this week has been a little more challenging. And I just returned from beautiful time in Italy. Mm -hmm. When you're away, you have no responsibility and then you come back. So a whole new reality again, right? Yeah. So oh. I'm trying to not go cuckoo here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds well, good. Thank you. Yeah, let's do it. Hi guys, Joanne here. <laughs> um I I just love group work too. And I want to just get to know everybody and share things and learn whatever I can learn. Um, but I also find that I eat when I'm stressed often. So I'd like to kind of figure out, you know, if there's anything I can learn here that would help me. So that's like your go-to kind of coping when you're starting to feel a lot of different things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah we'll definitely eat the wrong things. I should say, not just eat, okay. eat the wrong things. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we'll definitely hit some, some different tools, techniques that maybe you can kind of replace that with to, to kind of help you feel a little bit more relaxed. Great. Yeah. Hi, I'm Barbara. Hey, Barbara. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to work on my stress level. Um, anxiety sneaks in there pretty often. But over the last year, I made like all the major life changes kind of all at once. Tiring. Selling a house, buying a house, moving to a different state. Those are really, really yeah. big changes. <laughs> and really in a short period of yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Trying to kind of manage that a little bit. And I and I've been working on it, but I I always need a little more help. Okay. Yeah, we all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really happy you're here. That's awesome. All right. I'm gonna jump over to the zoomers for a couple minutes. 
Uh, does anyone want to chime in there? I'll go. Um, I'm Hope. I'm hoping to get, um, you know, some tools and strategies to handle like strong emotions, um, ones that I can use and ones that I can share with um, like kids at school and stuff like that. Great. Yeah, that'll be perfect, actually. That's, I was going to talk about that later, too, just like how effective some of the things that we're going to talk about can be used, like not only for us, but like people we work with, friends, family, like pretty much anyone we connect with on a daily basis. So that's awesome. We'll definitely try to get you some tools to bring forward to all of them. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. All right. Anybody else want to chime? We've got Lisa. Or I'm, I'm yeah. Kim. Um, I'm nowhere near as stressed as I used to be when I was working, but I like Joanne, I think when I get stressed, I eat. And so any technique that I could use to stop me from eating when I get stressed would be very helpful. Okay. Absolutely. Sounds, sounds like a plan. We'll definitely work on that. Uh, thanks for being here. And then we've got Lisa that's driving. So I don't know if you have to pay attention, but... <laughs> Uh, I'm okay at the moment. I didn't know that the Greek festival was happening tonight, though. Oh, Who really? knew? But anyway, I'm going to keep driving. Um, Don't step in there for food, Lisa. Right but so, we lost. I, I won't. Stress for me comes from anxiety. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Now we've got you. Am yeah. I back? Yeah, okay. you're back. So. Um, I've been working really hard on managing my anxiety and my insecurities and stuff, which is really, which is helping me with my managing my stress. But I, you know, like, I just, I, I know that anything that I can pour in with a group and, you know, just get more strategies is great. Like I keep saying, this program has helped me in, in, in so many different ways. And, um, so I, I'm really excited to be a part of this, to be be here when I can be anyway. I have I have other commitments on Thursdays, but I'm really going to try hard to be a part of this. Thank you. I'm really happy you're here. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully we can add some more tools to your, your toolbox that you've already been working really hard on. So Sounds good. You. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so I figure just to kind of help us loosen up a little bit, get some energy flowing, maybe we can just do a quick like three, four minute activity. And then we'll jump right in because I know we have a ton to cover and I want to make sure you get as many tools as you possibly can each time so that at the end of this, you can say like, all right, I've got this, so I'm good. Um, but I do kind of like to just do some fun stuff too once in a while, so. All right, so I've got a ball here and it's got quite a few different questions on it. So I know this might be a little harder for the Zoom people, but I can actually catch the ball or someone else can catch the ball on your behalf and we can kind of like then have you answer if you want. Is there a way to raise the volume? I think that's as high as it goes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like, like, yeah I think it's at a hundred. So yeah. I know it's like real. Maybe okay. on the side. Oh, let's try it. We're trying to increase the volume because we can barely hear you guys on Zoom. Up the volume. Um, I see a power button, but I don't see oh, a. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted to turn the music off because yeah. I'm like I would love it in the background, but right. it was so hard to hear everybody yeah. with the the music. Um, Okay, so if you guys can, if, if you're on Zoom, if you can just kind of yell at us a little bit, speak up, that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, so you guys want to just stand up, kind of, we'll just throw the ball around a little bit, wherever your right thumb lands, you can just go ahead and answer, and hopefully get to know each other a little bit. Here, let's All right. just want to move so they yeah, can see you. Yeah, I want to spread out a little bit. Let's see you, Bart. All right, you guys ready? Okay. Our heads are up. Yeah. And if you don't like one of the questions That's where your thumb lands, just pick any question you like. <laughs> if you meet somebody famous, who would it be? Can I think about it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know that's a big question, right? There's, there's a lot. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, um, All right. A song you can relate to. The only thing that just popped into my head is Cat and Jiggy with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, but I don't know how to do it. He said he wants high energy. So. <laughs> so. I'm going to throw it back to you so you can, because right, just, you want me to toss it? Yeah, you're just going to yeah, toss right. it. It's good. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, two words to describe yourself. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
tall <laughs> and friendly. <laughs> Something or someone you couldn't live without. Something or someone. I guess my family. I couldn't live without them. All right, I am catching it for Kim. You ready? Someone who inspires you. Someone who inspires me. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I, okay, for Springsteen. Love it. Perfect. <laughs> All right, awesome. Can someone catch it for Lisa? All right. A skill you would like to have, Lisa. Uh, uh, a skill I'd like to have. <laughs> I'd like to really be able to say no more often. <laughs> that would be I a mean, wonderful <laughs> yeah. Nice. I like that one a lot. <laughs> it's not it's much easier said than done, right? I think so. I, I've been getting a little better at it, but uh, you know, I wouldn't mind that to be a gift of mine, but I don't I don't have it All right. just All yet. Right. So. All right. Hope might be there. Let's see. Hope. Hope. Here. Hope still with us. All right. Yeah. Yeah. If you could only eat at one restaurant for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Yikes. Um, wow. Um, I'm guessing an Italian restaurant. Nice. I don't know what the specific I was, one. Oh, but I was thinking a restaurant in Italy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hey, birds one birds soon. Good food and another country. So. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right. I think we got all our Zoom people. But you have to and we're going to circle back. Oh, Anyone famous, famous you would love to meet? This week it would be Johnny Depp. <laughs> Do you know, I thought about that, but I think he's a little <laughs> off the wall. So. <laughs> all right. So we're going to think about it a little bit. I, it's a hard, hard topic. Yeah. Actually, the other one I thought about was like just from history. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to talk to Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that would be really I mean, cool. It's yeah. yeah. He was a strange looking guy. Ask how the play was. Ask <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> him how the play was. <laughs> he was shot up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he would be definitely an interesting one to kind of tap into yeah. and see kind of what the mindset was back then so versus smart. now. Yeah. yeah. All right, awesome. Thanks for playing along, guys. Yeah. All right, so now that we're all kind of <clears throat> we can know each other a little bit more, I want to go ahead and just jump into um, a PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen for everyone at home. Um, if you have any trouble at any point seeing it, just let me know. Um, so yeah, just like a quick note too before we jump in. You know, um, Anything that we kind of say in here stays between everybody here. I want it to be like a really safe place where we can all just kind of connect and help each other through, you know, whatever might come up. And we're going to be talking about emotions. Um, so those can be very charged sometimes. And there's a lot of things that can provoke different emotions. And so I just wanted to feel really safe and just that we kind of all have each other's back and we'll just keep everything that we say in here, you know, between us. So, um, so yeah, if everyone's good with that, we'll go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. Can you look at here and it's here to see better? Because like this should be the empty chair. So if you don't want to sit there, I could move there if you don't want to see wherever. That would be a good spot to look. Okay. There we go. Joanne, can I have a piece of paper, please? Thanks for bringing that number. everyone see that on zoom the powerpoint yeah yeah okay great okay so the workshop that we're doing is called tapping into your inner calm um so really what that is is just a lot of kind of what we've already brought up as far as 
tools, techniques, different things that you can use in your everyday life when you start to feel a lot of emotions, like whatever they might be. And there's a slew of them, um, which we'll get into in a little bit. But, you know, that's one thing that kind of connects us as human beings, the fact that we do have this ability to experience the world through emotion. And, you know, some of those are charged and some are pleasant and some are uncomfortable. And it's just kind of like all part of this human experience that kind of connects us all. So, um, so I just wanted to kind of give a little intro. That took me to the end. <laughs> oh boy. Let's try this that again. Was quick. I know that was very quick, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. Let's see if I can slow it down a little. Does this have a little of the other, the, the other little workshop that we went to? Yeah. Into? Okay. Yeah, this is kind of like a little bit of a deeper dive into it, but okay. yeah, a lot of, if you did the anxiety workshop, it's going to be a lot of like the same ideas, grounding things, okay. um, yeah, like relaxation. Okay, so first, since we're talking about emotions, I figure we'll just kind of take a little bit of a look at what they actually are. So emotions are honestly natural responses to either situations, experiences, um, there are things that just kind of happen to us that we, we typically don't have a lot of control over. We might have control over what we do with the emotion, but the emotion itself, when it comes to us, is usually some type of like a natural response um, that happens for us. It can be looked at a lot of times as like an energy stored within the body. Um, yeah, and we're going to have another session on actually movement and ways to kind of move energy, you know, throughout your body if you're experiencing certain things. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you can feel emotion a lot of times within your body. Like if you're excited, you, you tend to feel it physically, or if you're really upset about something, like there's usually some kind of physical energy that's coming along with that that you can typically tap into. Um, and like we kind of already said, it's a part of the human experience. You know, it's how we form connections with ourselves, with other people, um, and it's kind of just what makes us human. And it's messy and beautiful and complex and complicated and necessary. <laughs> like all of these random adjectives that seem to be so opposite, but yet in this situation, they kind of all meld together and merge. Um, we kind of need these emotions for us to be able to make, make sense of life um, and our own experience. And if you guys want to, I can always send you the PowerPoint after because I know that's a lot of stuff, um, oh, a lot of information. So I'm happy to email that to you. Yeah. Rather than me trying to write down all my little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's short hand. That can be a lot. Um, so why do we need to experience emotions? Does anyone have any kind of ideas or thoughts on experiencing them, like really feeling them? Well, I find that if I don't make my, let, allow myself to feel the emotion, I do something else like eat <laughs> okay, or keep busy or distract myself, but then eventually it comes up somehow. Gotcha. So it's coming up when so you anyway. can't control it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Emotion might be if something comes up, you have to experience it so you can let it go, solve it, figure out why, and you know, yeah. get rid of it and like feel it to be able to move through yeah, it. Kind right. of, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's such a big part of it. So like, how can you move through something if you're not even allowing it to exist? You know, like if you're just kind of shoving it aside or pushing it down, um, how would you be able to handle it? You know? And like Joanna said, then it's I know it's on here too, but it's going to come up at some point, whether you like it or not, or whether you're ready for it or not. So kind of allowing it to just exist and naturally come about and sit with it and whatever it is, whether it's joyful, whether it's unpleasant, just allowing it to kind of be, um, can be really helpful so that it doesn't surface in other ways later when you're least expecting it or least wanting it. So yeah, so healing happens by feeling, you know, um, exactly like what you were saying. Um, can't move through something if we never allow it to, to be a thing or to exist. Numbing, repressing, ignoring our true experiences can keep that energy that we were talking about of the emotion stuck literally within our body. And that's a lot to, to have to handle. Like when your body's feeling a certain way and it has nowhere to go, like that can be stressful in itself. So it can manifest in a lot of other ways. Anxiety, depression, panic attacks, physical pain, tension within your body, like it's all tied to these emotions that we're feeling. Um, and kind of like we already mentioned, if we don't let them kind of surface naturally, kind of when they're going to come out, you know, <laughs> and it could be in any form of ways, um, at inconvenient times. Sometimes it could be when we think everything's great and we're having a wonderful day and there's something that we kind of repress, all of a sudden there it is and we didn't even have anything happen that we necessarily thought would bring that about. But because we didn't really process it when it first came about, it's still kind of hidden in there. Um, 
for example, like, did anyone ever just get really upset or irritated about something that you know typically would not irritate you, but you you snap, you're like, that was the last straw, like, oh, that happens to my cat. I do that. I'm an easy freak out. <laughs> an easy freak outer. <laughs> yeah. So like maybe you have an argument or a conflict that you might realize later really wasn't about the thing you were talking about. Like there might have been something else underlying. Or you yeah. might see something in a different way and you're you're assuming it's and it, it upsets you, but that wasn't really the whole the whole gist of something. You know what I mean? Had you have yeah. maybe opened up your mouth and said something like why or what's going on, but no, you're you're assuming all these things in your thoughts mm -hmm. and leaving, you know. So, true, yes. Yeah. Like that's, that's me. That's what I get. Yeah. It's hard to connect with others when you're kind of like, what? yeah, yeah. Like when, when, when you get up, when I'm upset or in that state where you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I really think. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great point too. Like sometimes it does make it really hard to kind of be present and fully look at a situation from multiple perspectives when we are so just caught up in what it is that's going on in our mind and our body. Um, so working through emotions can kind of help to break away from that a little bit. The other one um, that I wanted to kind of mention was that it's really not possible to selectively numb. So if we're going to try to push things aside, if we're going to try to ignore things, repress things that we're feeling, yeah, we might be successful in doing that for a period of time until it comes about some other way. But it's also numbing a lot of the other really positive, great emotions that add so much to life, like that make life worth living instead of just existing, like, you know, um, so it's kind of it's kind of hard because you don't want to always feel the discomfort, but at the same time, what's life if we can't also experience joy and connection and love or whatever it is that you feel you need, you know? So like we can't numb one without the other. So it's kind of nice to be able to just let it all flow so we can have those good things go along with the things that feel not so comfortable. And then the armor that may have helped us survive before. So a lot of us put up some barriers, some walls, because maybe at one point we needed that to, to protect ourselves, whether it was physically, emotionally. Um, but as we progress through life and we're different people every day and we have more life experience, maybe what served us in the past, you know, that might not be what we need right now. Um, it might not be doing us any good anymore. So being able to kind of move through that emotion and allow many emotions to exist can kind of help to break that armor down a little bit sometimes and like look at things in a new way so that can be really helpful See if i can just do one slide at a time here okay so we are now entering the non-judgment emotion zone so quick check-in just because i know that it can be really really easy to judge emotions um or have thoughts about why it is we're feeling a certain way or things of that nature. So if anyone's comfortable sharing, like has anyone received any messages in your life about feeling emotions in general? <laughs> oh, okay. Feel like you want That's it to come out. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'd love to hear it. For some reason, the house that I grew up in, the kids were supposed to just keep quiet. Okay. And I had basically any emotions. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, like little kids running around playing. That didn't go over. Okay. So, like you know? the be seen but not heard kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that can be, um, that can be tough. So, that was, that was, that was a little difficult. However, Youngest brother, six years younger, and he was a handful. And my mom did take him to uh, talk to someone. And when she came home, she said to me, Now, you know, if he's being noisy, that means he's happy. Mm. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, I'm kind of late to the party. You know? right? yeah. Wow. Well, good for her for learning. Better late than never. Yeah. yeah, but I was 16 already. Uh, <laughs> so you already had to like not yeah. feel anything or yeah. show any any type of emotion at all. So that was that was really yeah. I'm working on it. Oh, thanks, for, <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm sure a lot of people totally can relate. Like, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that return. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, or like don't cry. Oh, yeah, don't, don't cry. cry. Don't cry. <laughs> yeah. It's such a natural don't emotion. Don't you I can't be angry. No. Yeah. No, we couldn't. 
right in the heels. Yeah, you know. Don't it just stomp those feet. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it was just I can like see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just you and your room. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's kind of like easier to do that than have yeah. to face the multiple emotions that could be. I know I was up. getting so like, there. You were set. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that's but, wow, that's like a perfect example of messages that you get when you're younger and yeah. how they can carry over then into adulthood. Because mm -hmm. I would think that that would be really difficult then when you've literally in adolescence and as a child have been taught like you don't say anything, you don't show anything. Mm -hmm. And then to hear later, like, oh, well, really, the only way to deal with things are to, to feel them. Yeah. Like, that's really conflicting info. So that yeah. can be really hard. Yeah. Absolutely. So what are um, some typical responses, like, for everyone when you do start to feel overwhelmed by emotion? You know, Joanne, you mentioned, like, the food is kind of a go-to. Um, yeah, which is a common Not all the time, but I notice that. Okay. It's a common one for sure. Yeah. Like, some people say they, they can't eat when they're stressed or something like that much you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i give myself a time out a time out okay so you buy yourself a little space literally to sit with it all right that sounds like actually really healthy yeah but then i stay there oh, okay yeah so that's like a, all right yeah. so it turns what could be healthy then turns into like isolation kind yes of. okay withdrawal all right I'm always curious about this last bullet too. Um, so what are your beliefs surrounding expressing emotion and particularly crying? But Barbara, I think you kind of sure already hit it. a little. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Anyone on Zoom have any uh, any of these kind of resonating with them or anything you wanted to share? Yeah, crying is always like embarrassing. Like you don't want to cry in, in public. Okay. Is it like a sign of, like, considered a sign of weakness or like a? I think so. Like, to me. Okay. I, yeah. I cry easy, so I'm always embarrassed because I feel like, you know. Okay. So that's like a natural emotional response for you and then like the judgment that might come along with that. Okay. Correct. Yeah. 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 No, thank you for bringing that up because that's something that I think a lot of people also experience just again, with like the messages around crying and what we've been told and taught and um, yeah, which we'll see in a second, crying is actually something that can be really helpful and really useful, but there are kind of those messages out there that oftentimes make us think otherwise. So yeah, that's a great point. Anyone else want to chime in on anything there before I flip? I learned quite a few years ago that I, I, I know I cry a lot, happy, sad, whatever. I don't wear makeup because I cry so much. <laughs> Just kidding, they're happy tears, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I also cry when I get really angry. Me too. Yeah. Like, I don't wow. watch the news anymore, but when I used to watch the news, yeah, it comes Bubbles. out as tears because like, what can I do about this? You know, what yeah. happens happening? You know? Yeah, definitely a way to express so many emotions. And that's, I'm so happy you said that because it's like most people think crying sad, which yeah, sometimes is the case. But there's so many other layers under it that can kind of like present in that same way. Yeah. And it can kind of be useful to help through a lot of emotions, not yeah. just like sort of the sad. Yeah. Doing something else instead right. of crying. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Get physical or cry. Right. It's probably crying is probably the better <laughs> action. <laughs> right. So here is actually a slide on crying. Um, because there are so many messages out there that, that kind of can be really confusing. So this is just kind of the cycle of what actually happens when we do cry and when we release that emotion in that way. Um, so there's usually something painful that happens or in some cases not if we're happy criers, but in this case, it's talking about something that we perceive as a negative experience. Um, so we kind of get overwhelmed with a, whatever that emotion is. Our amygdala, which is the emotional center of our brain gets activated. The brain sends a signal then to our nervous system. So it's, there's like so many moving parts here. It's really, it's kind of fascinating how it all links. So then our nervous system is alerted. Something's going on. There's an emotional thing taking place here. And tears are actually an involuntary response. Um, it just happens when this nervous system is activated. So for a lot of people who say like, oh, crying is a sign of like not being able to control things or, well, Technically, it's it's an involuntary response. Like we really don't have a whole lot of control of the tears that come because our nervous system is activated. So it really is something that most times is not necessarily within our control. 
they do serve a purpose, um, which is actually kind of cool. So it's actually to help us regulate. Like when we're feeling really overwhelmed or really overcome with emotion and all of these systems within our body are activated, that release of the crying is actually something that's supposed to help regulate your emotions within, within those systems that are reacting. Then pain killing chemicals are released. And this sometimes if it's physical pain, but it could be other discomfort, you know, within your body that you're experiencing. And then the mood boosting chemicals are released. Um, so it's kind of full circle where crying can actually release things within your body that help release you from whatever that emotion was that was so strong it felt so overwhelming that your body kind of like shut down or couldn't handle it. Um, has anyone ever noticed once you do have a good cry, like what's that like for you? There's relief after. Like a sense of relief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely can be a major sense of release and relief. And now you know there's actually physiologically something happening within your body that's kind of allowing that to happen. So crying can actually be a really good outlet sometimes when we're experiencing a lot of really hardcore emotions. Okay. So a lot of times, like we were mentioning earlier, it's really easy to kind of judge what we're feeling. Um, has anyone had an experience where you're like, I'm feeling really hurt or disappointed or sad or whatever it is, and then you kind of feel bad that you're feeling that way, or like that you shouldn't be feeling that way. Yeah, a couple minutes. So that is definitely something that, again, are based in a lot of messages that we receive. Like, you're not really supposed to have emotion. You are supposed to be like seen and not heard. You don't have a right to take up space. Like you don't, have a right to your own experience or to be able to react to things that are happening in a way that resonates with you. Um, but like we said earlier, emotions are honestly naturally occurring. You know, um, it's something that comes to us because of certain things that we don't really necessarily have control over. So kind of switching our mindset a little bit from just saying emotions are emotions, like they just exist and they are what they are versus labeling them as good or bad can be really calming and reassuring just in itself um, and freeing, really. You know, because it, it is just an experience and we have lots of experiences in life, right? So it's like, again, something that's coming, like most experiences, it's pretty temporary. And then it's probably at some point gonna pass, you know, forever, for however long that is for each person. Um, so yeah, just kind of looking at it from a place of non-judgment and letting yourself experience it and know that it's okay to experience a wide range of emotions. It's your personal experience. When we take time to let those emotions exist, they can actually have a lot of good information for us. Like they can, can be little messengers that tell us a lot about ourselves and a lot about whatever it is that we're going through. Um, so kind of allowing that space to process that emotion helps us to sit back maybe kind of get a sense of what's truly happening, um, maybe kind of sit with ourselves a little and calm down a little bit to be able to feel like we can choose how we want to respond instead of just reacting in the moment based off of this really intense emotion surge. Um, so it's all about kind of allowing yourself to feel it and sit with it and be okay mm -hmm. and know that it's not good or bad. It just kind of is what it is um, and just acknowledging it as an experience. So like we said, sometimes the experiences that you have or the emotions that you have can tell you so much about the situation and help us decide how we want to move forward. Um, so here's just like a little quote that I found that I've always loved. Um, I don't know. I know we can all read it, but your anger, it's telling you where you feel powerless. You know, that might be telling you where something's not right in your life or maybe where your, your boundaries or your values are being violated. So like, listen to it, you know, it's not a fun thing to sit with, but it can actually be really helpful. Um, your anxiety is probably telling you something's a little off balance. Your fear could be telling you what you care about. Because a lot of times we're afraid of something we really care, care about being hurt or taken away or, you know, um, manipulated in any way. So if you're fearful of losing something or fearful about an experience, it could be because it means a lot to you. Um, your apathy is telling you where you might be overextended or burnt out. So really the whole thing with this is that feelings aren't random. They are messengers and they want to speak with, to you and with you because they're yours only. In that moment, it's your true experience and they're your emotions and they're connecting within your body. So by listening to them, it's kind of allowing you to decide where you want to take it and what you want to do with them. 
So labeling emotions can be really important and helpful because of that reason. Um, so when you're sitting with yourself and you feel like a surge of emotion coming on, whatever it might be, taking a second to actually label what it is you're feeling and experiencing can be a huge help um, because it helps you to have a better understanding of what you're, exper you're experiencing, um, which can be really common or calming, sorry, I'm like some time now, <laughs> calming. Because um, when we think about that, that actually makes a lot of sense because if we're experiencing something and we don't really take the time to, to fully understand what it is that we're experiencing, it's really hard to know how to move through that or what to do with that. And that in itself can cause anxiety or other emotions that are unpleasant. So really by just kind of labeling it and saying, oh, right now I'm noticing that I am feeling angry what might that be telling me? Or I'm noticing I'm feeling really hurt or upset or disappointed. What might that be trying to tell me? And just kind of allowing it to exist and be can be really helpful. And also using an I feel versus an I am statement um, when you're labeling these emotions is really helpful as well. Because if you say like, I am angry, that's a part of your identity. You're saying like, I am anger. This is who I am. You know, really hard to kind of just change your identity just like that. Where if you say, I feel angry to yourself, you're then focusing on the experience of it. Like it's just something that came to me naturally. I'm feeling it right now. And like any other experience, it's probably gonna pass. So you're not making it a part of your identity. So just kind of changing that little language switch right there can be um, you know, really helpful in making all the difference with feeling like you have some control over the emotions versus it taking over who you are. So now I know, I think um, for those on Zoom, I know in the chat link that I sent out earlier, there was a Wheel of Emotions handout, and I'm going to put it up on the next slide, but I know it's a little hard to see, so you might just want to check out that worksheet. And for everybody here, there's actually the um, Emotions Wheel worksheet in your folder. So it's really interesting because there's a lot of research out there um, that suggests that most people, when they're asked, what is an emotion that you experience? It's usually a couple really basic ones. Um, happy, sad, angry, joy are like the typical go-tos. When really there are so many other emotions that we just don't use in our everyday vocabulary that we really could be noticing and experiencing, but we just have no idea because it's not, not a way that we commonly describe emotion. Um, so I'm going to take a peek at it too. So if you check this wheel out, when you're trying to kind of sit with your emotions and notice what you're feeling and label it and look at it as just an experience without judgment, it can be helpful to kind of have a piece of paper with some options that you can choose from right in front of you because you're already feeling overwhelmed and stressed or whatever it is you're caught up in that emotion. So to have to think of like, oh, what are all these other words that I could use to describe might be kind of a lot to handle right then and there. So this is a really good way, like if you're like, let's go with fear. So for example, fear is a common one that a lot of people relate to. But really a lot of times there's so many deeper underlying emotions under that fear that we might actually be experiencing and that might be driving this experience for us. So for example, yeah, you could be thinking it's just fear, but it could be insecurity, it could be nervousness, it could be terror, it could be anxiety, you could be feeling inadequate, um, helpless, you know, you could be feeling panic, worried. So these are all just these feeling words and these adjectives that we so often don't even think about because we get so stuck in that, that basic core center right there. Um, so I would just say like, hang on to these and anytime you feel emotions coming up or you feel like you're kind of getting overwhelmed with any kind of emotion, like take a peek at the chart and really see like, all right, what might be underlying? Like what might be driving what I think is anger or fear could really be so many other emotions also compounded into that, so. This can be really like a helpful worksheet when it comes to like the labeling and just kind of allowing things to exist. Okay, so now I just wanted to do a quick little video clip. Has anyone heard of Renee Brown? I'm obsessed. She's she's like, or that would be who my celebrity would be that I would want to meet, uh. Renee Brown. <laughs> um, she has done a lot of research. Um, she does a lot of work with shame, with guilt but also more recently with just emotions in general um, and kind of the things we're talking about, how important it is to allow them to exist, to sit with them, to be able to process them, to label them. Um, 
she has a new book that just came out, which is Atlas of the Heart. If anyone's interested in peeking through that, it deals completely with emotions. I actually have it in the office and, you know, you're welcome to look through and if it's something that stands out to you, um, then you'll know whether you, you want to spend the money to buy it or not. But, um, but yeah, it's a great book and it talks about all these emotions that exist out there that we never even know and how important it is to actually identify what it is that we're experiencing. So I'm just going to do a quick little video clip um, and then we can see what you think of what she has to say about it. Exiting us out. Okay, bear with me for one second. The Zoomers see it, everyone at home. TED Talk, the power of vulnerability has been made nearly a sense of 60 million times. Her latest research delves into 87 emotions and experiences that she says we all have in common. She writes about all of them in her new book. It's called Atlas of the Heart, Mapping Meaningful Connection in the Language of Human Experience. Renee Brown is with us in the studio. Listen, before we get started, Renee Brown walked into the studio rapping. <laughs> stress and overwhelm, which are a lot of people are feeling these days. Yeah, so stress is something that we can manage pretty much on a weekly, but we do it every day. Like, I always use an analogy, I used to wait tables and bartend, and we'd say, I'm in the weeds. Like, I'm in the weeds, so I'm going on, I'm in the weeds. We hide the stress that actually leads to shut down. We don't function when we're overwhelmed. Experience. Yeah. That's why you should be in tune. Most people have three emotions that they can name. 
read this book and get to 87. <laughs> hey, Brad, thank you very much. That book is, the, is Atlas of the Heart. Read it. We'll be right back. <clears throat> I think we're back. Okay, perfect. So does anyone kind of have any thoughts on maybe what she shared or she kind of sums up a lot of what we've already talked about so far with like the labeling, the letting it exist and not identifying with it. Um, can anyone kind of relate to anything that she kind of said or? I think everybody's really good. Yeah, I using different words. Yeah, you know, they, they, they change it or shift it. Yeah, it's amazing. That's interesting. The power of language, really, mm -hmm. just with our mindset. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just always think it's so interesting, too, that there are so many emotions out there. Like, we're so used to just this core little bundle. And then to hear that she did research on literally 7,000 people and this, you know, like, to identify that there's so much more than just what 7,000 people thought initially. Like that's that's kind of a pretty cool thing, mm -hmm. but also just shows us how much we don't talk about it or we don't have emotion be a part of our everyday life when it's such a part of our experience mm -hmm. as a person. So it's just kind of interesting to hear like the, that there's research behind it and backing, it's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we're starting to feel kind of like overcome by any emotion, typically the ones that are a little bit unpleasant, um, doing a grounding exercise can be really helpful to kind of bring you back into your body, get you in the present moment, buy you a little bit of time so that you can say like, all right, this is truly what I'm experiencing and it's okay that I'm experiencing it, no judgment, but I don't really want to stay here because it's not the most comfortable. So like, what can I do to make myself feel safe? Like in this moment right now, while I'm processing whatever this thing is that's coming up for me. So there's a lot of different grounding extra exercises and activities. Um, we'll do a, a five senses activity. We're gonna actually do that next session, um, but that really taps into like our sight, our hearing, our sound, taste, smell, like the things that make us focus on what's in our environment right here and now. Deep breathing is another really awesome one. Um, it, it literally relaxes your body. It helps you connect with your own breath, which is the most natural thing that keeps us going. So to be able to kind of tune into that and use that to relax the rest of your body is a great thing. Some people like to like make lists of like a topic, say like favorite songs or favorite colors or and just kind of list things to kind of distract them temporarily to get away from like whatever it is. As long as you're doing that as a temporary distraction and something to kind of bring you back to the moment and then you're okay sitting with it, that's good. You just don't want to do a distraction that takes you so far away from the emotion that you never come back to it and process it. Guided, unguided meditation, um, again, kind of helps you do some visualization, some breath work um, to kind of help you physically relax your body and feel more safe. Progressive muscle relaxation is when you tense up purposely and then release tension in certain parts of your body. Um, and that can really help you to feel kind of calm and at peace and at ease. And we're actually going to do that next session. So um, yoga movement, again, because we were saying like, Emotions are often energy that's stored within our body. So moving in different yoga poses and um, any kind of movement, really, even if it's just like walking or shaking a little or can kind of move that energy through you so it doesn't feel stuck. Savoring something that you enjoy, if it's a food or a beverage and not necessarily turning to it to fix the problem, but literally being in the moment and savoring it and noticing the experience um, can be really calming and nice. Or even like physically touching something that brings you comfort, whether that's like a blanket. Some people even touch like an ice cube if they feel like they're like spiraling out and they're like, I'm so overwhelmed right now that I'm shutting down. Like something that brings you back to that moment. Like it's really hard to hold an ice cube and not be focused on that ice cube, you know? So like just something that brings you back so that then you can breathe through it and allow yourself to like identify what's happening. So I just wanted to go over, so I want to start kind of getting into the tools that can help you when you're feeling all these things. Um, so I just wanted to do a couple quick breathing exercises because I feel like that's a really good start, um, a really good basis for kind of making yourself feel more calm and relaxed and calming your nervous system down when you're starting to feel really charged so that you can sit with these emotions and you can allow them to just be. 
Um, so if everyone's okay with just giving these a try, um, I'll just go ahead and talk you through it a little bit. And I'm going to do it with you also because I just like to do it for myself. It's helped me a lot. Um, so these are two breathing techniques that you can use. Again, the first one is called four, seven, eight breathing. So you're going to inhale for four. You want to inhale to the point where you can kind of feel your lungs and like maybe the top part of your stomach expanding a little. So you want it to be a nice deep breath, but not so deep that you feel uncomfortable or panicked because it's too much breath in there. So you want to do what feels comfortable for your body. You're going to hold it for a count of seven. And then you're going to exhale for a count of eight, like out your mouth. It almost makes like a whistle sound or like a little blowing sound. And that's literally releasing that tension from your body and calming down your nervous system so that you can sit with these emotions. So if we want to go ahead and maybe give it a try for a minute, I'll talk you through it. And I might do it a little bit myself. <laughs> so just you want to start just kind of like releasing kind of any tension that you're feeling. Drop your shoulders a little bit. If you're kind of clenching your jaw or anything. Maybe you want to release that a bit. Then we're just going to turn our attention to our breath. So when you feel comfortable, you're going to go ahead and inhale for four. Hold for seven. And then exhale for eight out your mouth. And then we're just going to do that a couple times through at your own pace. And really focus on that hold and that exhale. And we'll do one more round, and then if you want to go ahead and come back to your room. So when everyone finishes up. I just want to check in with you and just kind of see how that was. Did anyone feel kind of any relaxation or tension release <clears throat> within your body? Yeah, it's definitely relaxing. <clears throat> but I, I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night, like if I had a weird dream or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or if I just wake up to go to the bathroom and I usually do that to get yeah. back to sleep. That's great. Yeah, that's such a great way to just Ooh, literally calm it. Just, just, yeah, just put yourself back into that relaxation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome that it works fast yeah. too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it does. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's nice. yeah. And this, it's kind of nice because you could do this really anywhere. Not everyone has to know that you're doing mm -hmm. it. So you could be like really stressed at work or at a family event. We all know that that brings some stress. So, <laughs> you know, these are things that you can kind of just do in everyday life. The whole point is just to make yourself feel safe knowing I'm physically safe right now, my body is relaxed. So whatever emotion's coming to me, like I can handle, it's okay. Like I'm gonna just let it be because I'm all right and I'm safe. So I wanna try one other one too. And again, some of these will work for people. Other people will be like, oh, I like this one more than that one. So I just wanna toss like a lot out there and you'll find like what works best for you. Right. Um, so the next exercise I wanna try real quick is called box breathing. Um, so again, you're using breath work to calm your body to kind of ground yourself and reconnect. So this one works typically a lot better if you close your eyes. You can leave your eyes open, but we're gonna do a little visualization as we're breathing. So sometimes this might work better if you can kind of like just close your eyes for a second. So we're gonna go ahead and close our eyes and we're gonna picture just like a nice little square box or a rectangle if you really want, but I like to picture a square box. I like to keep it even. <laughs> All right. So as you're picturing this box, you're gonna trace with your mind the edges of this box as you breathe. So we're gonna go up one side of the box as we're inhaling. Then we're gonna go along the top of the box as we're holding. Then we're gonna go visually down the other side of the box as we're exhaling. And then we're gonna go across the bottom of the box holding that exhale. And then start again with the other side of the box inhaling. I'm going to walk you through it one more time. So we're going to inhale up the first side of the box. 
And what did you go across the top of your box? Exhale down the side of the box. And hold that exhale across the bottom. And then go ahead and inhale up the other side. Go ahead and just kind of trace that box a couple times through. And then when you feel like you've kind of traced your last box, so you can go ahead and just kind of come back to the room. So that was just a little bit of a different approach. Again, same kind of breath work, same kind of idea calming down the nervous system but also a little bit different because with the box breathing, there's a bit of exhale, hold, where with the other one, it's just inhale, hold, exhale. So we were actually holding the exhale with this one. Um, so a lot of different ways that you can kind of play with your body a little bit to kind of feel what's comfortable for you and what makes you feel calm and what works for you. Um, but this is just an example. There's so many different options out there, um, you know, that, that you can kind of play with a little bit. Like some people are like, oh, I want to visualize a bigger box because I want deeper breaths. Or some people are like a tiny box works good for me because I get nervous when I hold my breath too long. Or like for the numbers for the four, seven, eight breathing, some people are like, I want to do five, eight, nine, or I want to do, you know, three, six, seven, like whatever works for you. You can kind of play with it a little bit. There's no right or wrong. So it's all about what makes you feel safe and good in that moment. So I'm gonna do, we still have a little bit of time. So I just wanna kind of check in with everybody and see, cause I know we covered so much information tonight. Um, it's a lot to take in, I know. And this kind of sets the basis for all the other sessions. So I kind of wanted to pack a lot in there cause I feel like the more we understand why we're doing something then it makes more sense to do the tools, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so how's everyone feeling? Like after those exercises, after kind of taking all this in, what are your thoughts? I'm more relaxed. More my day. Yeah. Okay. I'm really? angry today at work. Okay. There you go. You're labeling it already, yeah. right? You're yeah. sitting with it. Right. Sitting with that anger. Yeah. Okay. Why I thought the wheel was really interesting. It? Yeah. It was like a, uh, I don't know, what do you call when you're writing a story and you have the main, then you have the indent, and you come over and you have another little one, and then you have the, the you know, the next full of them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, like an outline format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I remember back in school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's kind of like what it, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to cool. check, definitely check that out. Awesome. Just to see, you know, all the other different things that go into one big pot. Kind of sort of like feeling back the onion, you know, you're getting into what's yeah. underneath. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So many layers, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it is, it's like almost mind boggling that there are all these feelings out there and we've only really let ourselves feel a certain few yeah. where we've been told that that's all we can mm -hmm. feel or not to feel at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, what would you guys envision if you allowed yourself to kind of sit with feelings and start feeling them? Like, what do you think that would be like? I can tell you what it was like for me when I started. <laughs> it was scary and it was uncomfortable and it was definitely not pleasant. Um, didn't like it, but it's so necessary and so important. And it helped me to move through then so many things that were difficult in my life. And, you know, just being able to know that I can calm myself and allow whatever it is that comes to just exist and be okay. I'm not going to beat myself up over feeling it. I'm not going to feel one way or the other, because it's just a natural response and reaction. I'm not going to identify with it. I'm just going to let it pass when it needs to figure out what it might be trying to tell me. But like, at first, when you're not used to allowing yourself to feel things, and then all of a sudden it comes up and you're, you're like, all right, I'm going to actually sit with this. A lot of times it is really uncomfortable and messy. So I just want to kind of put that out there that it's a new experience. And like anything else in life, it's hard to know when you have nothing to compare it to if you haven't done it before. 
and that can be like a little bit the unknown's a little scary like uncertainty can be a little scary um it's if you can stick with it and sit with that kind of discomfort and that messiness it opens so much light on the other side of that to be able to kind of process things and move past things but it, just know it's it is normal and actually expect it for it to be a little bit uncomfortable if you do allow yourself to finally start feeling some things that maybe you wouldn't have allowed yourself to feel before. Total normal part of the process, but it's kind of like moving through the difficult to get to that, that light at the end of the tunnel. Anyone have any thoughts on that? I know that's a lot in itself to take in that it might be hard and a little yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, I did have a thought. Um, I just, I do remember from a meditation from Georgia a long time ago, like when I am sitting in a very crazy emotional state, mm -hmm. like I just can say to myself, but I'm okay in this moment, you know, like, like everything is okay in this moment. Cause like, you know, that anxiety of that futuristic thinking or even past thinking, you know, it's like, but wait a minute, this yeah. moment I'm I'm absolutely okay. And that just brings a peacefulness. Wow, yeah. And what a powerful place to be in knowing that in that moment, even if things don't feel okay, you're okay. Like, that's just so powerful. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that also speaks so much to, I'm so glad you brought that up to self-talk and, you know, just being able to affirm to yourself that you're safe and you're okay and reassure yourself. Like, we kind of have to, be there for ourselves through this process and this journey and kind of be our own reassurance and our own best friend with this because mm -hmm. only we can feel what we're experiencing like you know like we could all experience the same thing but have very different emotions surrounding it so mm -hmm. it's always going to be such a unique experience as we're allowing these these emotions to exist so yeah being able to kind of have your own back with that is amazing that's, that's pretty mm -hmm. great yeah and again with the language self-talk such a big part of it you know labeling it yeah. talking yourself through reassuring and you know it's actually really impossible to be amped up and anxious and have our nervous system on high alert and also feel reassured and safe at the same time it's kind of like it doesn't click it doesn't jive you know opposites right exactly it's opposites so if we can get ourselves to a place while we're experiencing discomfort but we can physically calm ourselves down and ground ourselves and reassure ourselves like we kind of can't be in panic mode because our body is relaxed like it would it wouldn't make sense for our natural fight flight or freeze response to be activated if we're also relaxed at the same time so to get to that place where you're grounded and relaxed so then you can sit with these feelings is what it's all about like if nothing else if you take nothing else from this at all it's literally about like that sense of safety and that relaxation within your own body so that you can handle whatever it is that comes your way um, so I'd say like that, that's a biggie. It's just like chemistry, how our body works. We can't be amped up and calm at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to process things so much better and be able to sit with them and handle them if we are calm and feel safe. So I'd say that's like a, a big, 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 big thing that I would hope would be the major takeaway if nothing else. Cause I think that in everyday life, just reminding yourself of that, like, I'm safe, I can calm, I can physically calm myself down right now and I can handle this would be such a game changer. That's what I need to do as soon as I start going into my thoughts. I need just mm -hmm. to come, nip it in the butt, get away from the jump mm -hmm. and, and don't get to that that crazy level right. of thinking and or assuming or all these other adjectives like that, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. It's just breathe mm -hmm. out, you know? Yeah, or, you know? yeah it's so true. Yeah. So it's also sometimes hard to stop the narrative. Yeah. yeah. You know, you just get on a loop. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I keep on what yes. if, what if, what if. I did that. Did you? With the anger? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, I guess we're all thieves <laughs> in this place. <laughs> I told no. the president, I guess we're all thieves. Oh, man. So you better do background checks on people oh. if they have to lock the whole supply closet. Right. Yeah. yeah for a couple things of ink cartridges for the computer. Oh, geez, yeah. So you gotta lock all the supplies of that. <laughs> so that was a little anger provoking there, huh? <laughs> yeah, because the guy took an hour to come and unlock it. Oh. I just needed a couple pens. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> That's a mess. Yeah, that is frustrating. Yeah. Anyway, 
but yeah good point you, yeah do. you told the narrative of like oh we're all thieves they don't trust any of us yeah, it's still, I and mean, then we I was acting like an idiot well I'm sorry it was natural though you know what? it was yeah. a natural response no but judgment. then the guy okay. came and was like, you're the only one complaining about it. Aww. So that makes you feel, you know. Yeah. But whatever. Again, hey, we're allowed to have our own experiences. Maybe it right. impacted you more than it impacted him, and that's okay. Yeah. We all experience life differently, yeah. so it's all good. So. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. So. Hey, it happens to the best of us, right? <laughs> that's so true. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually a great... um. Barbara, as you were saying with the narratives and all that brings us kind of into what we're going to be doing next time so i'm so happy that you brought that up um so yeah it is all about the self-talk and the narratives and the story that we tell ourselves with how we embrace not only us but the world around us and our connections that we have with other people and again kind of how we feel about expressing emotions feeling emotions if it's okay if it's not okay if we're going to judge it or we're going to let it exist like it's all this story that we kind of have in our head that we play out and then we tend to live the life of the story we're playing in our head. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like a really interesting connection. So that is something I'm definitely going to dive into pretty hardcore next session. Like that's going to be pretty much the topic of everything. Those narratives and how we can kind of change those narratives a little bit um, and kind of rewrite our own stories. Because I'm like, life can be beautiful and joyful and fun and happy, but it's also mixed with a lot of other things too that aren't so pleasant. But if we can kind of rewrite the stories that we tell ourselves a little bit, we can tap into that joy a little bit more often. Um, well, it's like you said yeah. about emotions. They're not necessarily good or bad. Yeah, it's what we do with them. Right. It's exactly. like any situation that we right. encounter, it's not good or bad. It's how we interpret it and react right. to it. Absolutely. So we change the way we think about something. Yeah. It's not a bad thing that just happened. Yeah. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. That and what are we going to do with it? Exactly. No, you're spot on yeah it's going to be changing that story that we tell ourselves to have a different outcome yeah i find that over my lifetime i've gotten much better at, at feeling my emotions and handling them and all that mm -hmm. it's really just communicating with other people who aren't able to yeah you know it's really mm -hmm. hard to communicate with mm -hmm. others yeah. even if you know how to communicate your feelings yeah. others don't know how to accept it or what to do with it mm -hmm. or how they're feeling about it and then so just frustrated. go to my room then and deal with it myself. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> isolate, right? So true though. Like that room. <laughs> we can so impact like what we put out there in the world, but not how it's received. And that's that brings up emotions in itself, right? Yes, like yes. frustration or helplessness mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Like that in itself is an experience when you're trying to communicate and other people aren't picking up what you're putting down, pretty much, you know. Um, so yeah, that stems into a whole other like. Other class, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, like I was saying, next time we'll kind of work on our narratives a little bit, rewrite our stories that we tell ourselves. Um, I usually like to kick it off with maybe like talking about some emotions that we felt during this week. Um, well, two weeks actually, because it's a two-week uh, break between this one and the next one. So maybe um, we could really start to pay attention in the next couple weeks before the next time we see each other to what it's actually like for us to sit with some of these emotions or what it's like to label our emotions or look at them without judgment and like really tap in to what our experiences are between now and the next time we see each other. And maybe we can kind of like unpack that a little bit um, together and just kind of see if anyone's in the same boat or like what the experience is, you know, cause it's unique for everyone, but I think we're also going to have a lot in common too. With... So the homework is to have some emotions. Yeah, the, the <laughs> homework is to literally have emotions and let yourself have them without judgment and feel whatever you have to feel and not feel bad about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that'll be fun. And then again, like I said, every time we'll, we'll tap into a couple other exercises that again can help you to be grounded. Um, so we'll do the sensory exercise and a couple other little things. Just yeah. load up that toolbox while we're also learning about it and kind of helping each other sit with it. So, um, so yeah, that'll be our thing. Um, and yeah, these are things also you can definitely share with friends, family, you know, like I said before, coworkers, whoever you encounter in your life. Um, you know, you're welcome to, to come, but also if you want to take this back to them and what you've learned, you know, maybe kind of sharing a little bit of this and some tools with them will help with that whole engaging with other people who might not be so great at dealing with their emotions. Yeah. So hopefully this can, can kind of spill over into some other areas of your life too and, and maybe help some other people out also. And you'll email us about this PowerPoint. So we can, yeah. that would be great. Yeah, if everyone's okay with that, I will go ahead and email that out to you. And I think 
Um, they're going to email out just a copy of tonight's session too, if anyone's interested in rewatching any part of it or um, yeah, so we'll go from there. Does anyone have any questions? I know tonight was a lot to take in. Okay. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not overwhelmed. Not overwhelmed? Yeah, how's everyone feeling right now? Like what would we identify as some emotions? I'm fine. I'm calm. I'm, I'm, I'm like calm. I'm calm right now. Calm. I'm a hell of a lot better than I was when like, I was. When I get back in my car, we'll see. Like, <laughs> I see Deb. Does Kama have any stuff? How about everybody at home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you feeling right now? Let me see my wheel. <laughs> any Anyone at home feeling any kind of emotion? Encouraged. Encouraged. Like we're all in the same, like the same kind of boat and learning. And so it's good. I'm feeling encouraged. Awesome. Yeah, that's what it's all about for sure. So very cool. Great emotion word too. encourage like another one that we wouldn't turn to all the time or go to, but it's like such a real thing. So that's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Cool. anyone else have any questions? Anything that wordy? So... <laughs> all right, well, if everyone's good, I'm going to go ahead and let you go and get back to your night. Um, thank you so much for being here and just for kind of connecting with everyone and I'm just really excited for this and I'm really just happy with our group and the fact that we can kind of support each other and and get some new tools and work through yeah. some fun things so all right and there's four sessions on together yeah there's four sessions I think the next one is in two weeks mm -hmm. yeah so there'll be a little bit of a lag between a few of them but again that could be the in-person or the virtual um if anyone is at home right now and wants to come in person just like send us a message and we can switch you over um no no biggie so we'll make it work whatever works for you guys all right. Thank you. Bye, right. bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. bye guys. Bye. bye. Have a good night. Are you going to stop the recording? I'm going to stop the recording. Well, I'm going to try to. We'll see yes. if it's successful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, most of us know each other, in case you didn't see that already. I know. <laughs> Some of us have been working with Georgia for a couple of years. And, and her, I think she has a program that's 12 months long. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things she offers. And a lot of us are in that and have been in it for a couple of years. So that's really? how we know each other. So like we meet once, twice a month and have yoga together and stuff, meditation together. So cool. we started, I think this year we started in March. Yeah, I think March 30th. March 30th.